Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod and to episode 2 of the Endless Runner tutorial series. I'm Noah. Now, during the first episode, we began bringing our little game to life by making the simple player controller. Today, we're going to make obstacles that spawn in game and that will actually damage the player. Just before starting, here's a big thanks to Pebble and Wisp who support me and my content via Patreon. With that said, let's begin. So obviously, I want my player taking damage whenever he collides with an obstacle. To detect collisions, we need to add colliders. So I'll select my little player ghost character and add a simple 2D box collider to him. I'll also add a 2D rigid body component set to kinematic to that character. And lastly, I'll add a 2D circle collider to my obstacle, this one set to trigger. Okay, now I can create a new c -sharp script called obstacle, add it to my obstacle and open up. In it, I'll make a function called onTriggerEnter 2 d This function will basically get called whenever the obstacle collides with something. Note that if we hadn't set the obstacle collider to trigger in the inspector, then this function would never get called. However, it's also a good idea to get some information on what the obstacle has actually collided with. To do so, I'll add a parameter between these parentheses of type collider 2d called other and I'll check whether what we've collided with has the player tag and if it does awesome we'll deal the player some damage before doing that there though I'll head over to my player script and simply create a new public int variable called health that I'll set to a 3 by default now back in my obstacle script I'll grab the player script component attached to the player which the obstacle has obviously just collided with and reduce health with a certain amount of damage. So of course don't forget to make a public int variable called damage which I'll set to 1 by default. And there we go, my player will now take damage. I'll debug.log the player's health and also destroy my obstacle as soon as it comes into contact with the player. Make sure to type this only after it's dealt its damage to the player. Before testing things out in Unity, I'll make the obstacle move towards the player. Doing so is super easy. I'll simply type in my update function transform.translate and in the parentheses state in which direction I want my obstacle to move. So vector 2 dot left multiplied with speed, which is a float variable I'll create up here and that will dictate how fast our obstacle actually moves. And again, don't forget to also multiply everything with time dot delta time. Now type some speed value in the inspector and do the same for damage and for the player's health if you've not done so already directly via code. Also make sure that the player has the player tag or the if statement inside the obstacle script will never return true. And now I'll align my obstacle with the player in the scene view and hit play. And you'll see that when the obstacle hits the player character, it not only destroys itself but also deals the player one point of damage, as you'll notice in the console. With that working nicely, I'll turn the obstacle into a prefab and begin working working on the spawning system. As you can see, the obstacles are spawning from the right side of the screen every X amount of seconds. And throughout the game, the time between spawning obstacles will decrease, making things more difficult. And all this is really easy to put into place. I'll begin by making an empty game object called Spawner and drag it over to the right of the screen just out of view from the camera, with a Y position of 0. I'll then add a new c -sharp script to it called Spawner and open it up. I'll begin by making a few variables. First of all, a public one of type GameObject called Obstacle. I'll also create a private float variable named Time Between Spawn and a public float variable called Start Time Between Spawn. This may be a little confusing, but soon all will be very clear. Anyway, with that done, I'll make an if statement in my update function, checking whether time between spawn is less or equal to zero. If it is, then it's time to spawn an obstacle. If not, I'll gradually decrease the time between spawn until it reaches zero using minus equals time dot delta time. Awesome. I'll now instantiate my obstacle at the spawner's transform.position 
and with no rotation. I'll also set time between spawn back equal to start time between spawn, this way the spawner will have to wait X amount of seconds before another obstacle spawns in game. So I'll now head back into Unity, drag and drop my obstacle prefab inside of that empty slot in the inspector, and for now I'll get an obstacle spawning every 0.5 seconds. And indeed, an obstacle will spawn every 0.5 seconds. Of course, 0.5 is a little too fast to start the game off. I'll first of all set it to 1.25 and slowly but surely reduce that value. So back in Visual Studio, I'll make another public float variable called decrease time. Then right here, I'll reduce start time between spawn with this decrease time. This way, time between spawn will be a little smaller next time around, meaning obstacles will spawn faster. Of course, we need some limit here. We don't want obstacles spawning incredibly fast and not leaving the player any time to dodge. So I'll make a last public float variable called min time, set that equal to 0.65 by default, and make an if statement here, checking whether start time between spawn is greater than min time. If so, we'll reduce the start time between spawn value, if not, nothing will happen and the game won't become impossible to play. I can now head back into Unity and set decrease time equal to 0.05. This way, whenever an obstacle spawns, the next one will spawn 0.05 seconds sooner and you'll notice that things indeed get more and more frantic. But still, this game is way too easy. The obstacles are just all spawning in the middle, which is pretty boring. It's time we made some obstacle patterns. I'll create an empty game object called Obstacle Pattern 01, reset its position, and make another empty game object, which I'll parent to it called Spawn Point 01. I'll give it a little red gizmo so we can properly see it in the scene view, and give it a position of 5 which is the highest position the player can hop up to. I'll add to it a C-sharp script called spawn point, and inside that I'll simply make a public game object variable called obstacle, and instantiate that obstacle in the start function at the spawn point's transform dot position. And so I'll drag and drop my obstacle in there, duplicate the spawn point, and give it a Y transform position of zero. And there we go, we have our first obstacle pattern which I'll turn into a prefab. I'll now duplicate that, call it obstacle pattern 02, and instead of having an obstacle at the top and middle, I'll have one at the middle and bottom. I'll turn that into a prefab as well and make a last obstacle pattern. This one with a spawn point at the top and bottom, and also turn that into a prefab. Now instead of spawning an obstacle via my spawner, I'll spawn a random obstacle pattern, which in turn, with its spawn points, will spawn actual dangerous obstacles. So I'll hop back into my spawner script and turn this game object variable into an array, calling it obstacle pattern. To spawn a random object inside this array, I'll need to make an int variable called rand for random and set that equal to a random number between 0 and the number of elements in the array. And then I'll simply spawn the obstacle pattern of a random index. And there we go! Now if you're finding this whole array story a little hard to digest, I definitely suggest you check out a video me and my bro Liam made a while back on the topic. Alright, I'll now lock the inspector, drag and drop my three obstacle patterns into that array and hit play. And you'll see that indeed, obstacles come shooting towards me in random, tricky patterns. Super. Before wrapping up the video, I'm going to get the game restarting when the player reaches zero health. So I'll head over to my player script and make an if statement checking whether he's fallen to zero health or less. If so, I want to restart the game because the player has died. To do so, I'll need to add the using UnityEngine.SceneManagement namespace up here, which is required to handle anything to do with loading scenes via code. I'll now need to type SceneManager.LoadScene, and I'll simply load my current active scene. This line does look a little tricky, but like me, you'll get used to writing it. Now I can hit play, die on purpose, and indeed, after three hits, the scene will reload. Of course, you can take this a step further by perhaps bringing the player to an actual game over scene. Just create a game over scene and then between these parentheses type the exact name of that scene. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll leave things simple like this. 
and that will mark the end of this video. Now, in the third and final episode of this small Endless Runner tutorial series, we will create UI to display the player's health and score, as well as add some cool effects and sounds to our game. We'll also take a look at how to make this repeating parallax effect background, which should be really fun. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and were able to follow along. Remember that game day, though epic and fun, in many ways, can also be really challenging and difficult. So don't get discouraged if you didn't understand everything, or find making art, sounds, or the like tough. Just keep at it, be proud to already be trying to learn and progress, and I promise it's impossible you don't end up making amazing things. With that said, if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Also consider supporting me financially like these awesome people via Patreon. Alright, see you in two or three days for episode three. Cheers!